Toad? Yes, Smithy, you've done it! You've crafted the strongest weapon imaginable! Um, actually, Cotton, there is one thing that could make it stronger. What? Well, if you could go grab me an Anjanath's tail... And Anjanath? Yes, yes, and then a Glavinus's arm. Arm? Yes, and then if you wouldn't mind, I'll take both of the pinky toes off of a Runer near Gigante. I, uh, is that all? That dude there. I need his prosthetic leg. His leg? Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, as we come rapidly closer to more game updates with more monsters and more glorious general game additions, now seems like the best time to sit back and reflect on what has already come. The good, the bad, and the ideas for how these systems and mechanics could be changed and reused in the future. Future! Today, specifically, I want to talk a little bit about the custom weapon mod upgrade things in Iceborne. When you craft an entry master rank weapon, you will either have a cool, badass, unique weapon that will fill you with joy as you cut monsters in half, or you'll have a weapon that can take custom upgrades. The non-unique weapons, meaning those that are based off of the metal and bone shapes, can have materials fed into them to ever so slightly raise their attack, defense, affinity, or element slash status attack stat a number of times. And in the process, it changes the visual parts that are attached to your weapon to fit the upgrade it has most recently had applied. And this, in itself, many people believe, was implemented as a sort of band-aid patch on the weapon design, a way to make people a bit less upset about the base bone and metal weapons. I mean, you can change them to look like other monsters, which totally fixes that problem, right? I like it, Denial! That is first part of the grieving process, brothers. Well, to developers' credit on this one, I think it did help in a couple of ways. I mean, first up, yeah, the variety is a little bit nicer. Your weapon still grows and changes as you progress, even past the final weapon of the tree. And honestly, for a lot of players, it might be the only time that you'd see, for example, a Valhazak part on a metal bow. So there are at least a few positives from the visual end of the system. As far as the mechanical side of it, well, it simply gives a large portion of the purpose to the Guiding Lands. Without it, we would gather the absolutely minimal amount needed for proper augments, then maybe some stuff to make a nice pendant or some other nice flavor-based side activity that we do over there. And then other than the pure joy of simply hunting a monster for the sake of hunting it, the guiding lands would be more or less useless to us. And I base that on absolutely nothing. The custom upgrade system ensures that we have more good, progression-based reasons to hunt in the guiding lands rather than on investigations, for example. And it pushes you towards experiencing more of this wonderful game, on which note it's succeeds even further by having things like literally a great Jagras mod. Did you really think upon reaching the end game of Iceborne that you would get an actual upgrade from fighting a great Jagras? I know I didn't. So the next point is variety, but in a much larger way than just, hey, we get to fight low tier monsters because this game has master rank. Most people through the regular game progression to the end game, unless they went out of their way to do it, will likely just not even see a number of base world monsters, meaning these people miss out on their new master rank moves and this time around they really did put a ton of effort into these new moves, and I don't think there's a single one that doesn't make me happy when I see it, so the custom upgrade system putting the player against a lower tier monster also doubles up as showing you all the new master rank stuff, but with a viable character progressing purpose. The most recent title update that came with Rajang also unlocked a new sixth tier of custom upgrades, which was neat, but if this is an actual precedent being set and every title update comes with more custom upgrades, this actually has the potential to shift the meta completely as one new custom upgrade could honestly be enough to change the mathematically best weapon for each type. And while some people might not be a fan of that, I actually really like it. I mean, sure, it means more bone and metal weapons, but it also means more people using straight up different weapons, which is always cool to have happen. But now that I've talked about the good parts of the system, the parts that I actually quite like, it's time to dive into the stuff that is maybe not quite so great. This is why we can't have nice things. And starting in that good old visual section, again, while the main glaring issue here is that putting a different monster's parts on a base bone or metal weapon doesn't make it look even remotely better. On average, if anything, honestly, it actually makes the weapons look worse, because at least in the original composition of the weapon, the base shape was considered when the monster parts were added, whereas this feels sort of like some strange random number generator was used to create the combinations, and as I said before, some of them look interesting for sure, but the opposite side of that spectrum is things that look like absolute trash, and there are a fair 
few of those around, like Fulger and Janass bits on the Great Juros Metal Hammer, for example. Don't get me wrong, the furry bits are nice, but look at how it connects. There's a little bone plate that doesn't even really attach to anything, and it, it literally just makes this version of this weapon entirely unusable to me, which is a shame, because I love the Great Juros Hammer. I think it's one of the best shapes for a base metal weapon in the game. It's awesome. But then I had this little custom monster part, and... Oh, I made myself sad. Then there was also the idea that the system technically adds more visual variety, as one person might mod their weapon towards attack, and another towards affinity, and then they both have the same weapon, but it looks different, which, yeah, is a fair statement, till you realize that the community as a whole will generally agree on what the best one is, and all do the same thing anyways. For the same reason, we often wind up all using the same weapons, and then e even past that, this mechanic is an incentive to use the bone and metal weapons that just don't look as good as the unique ones. So you're literally pushing people away from the coolest looking weapons in the game, as sad as that is. That said, that incentive is just so incredibly small. I mean, one attack per attack upgrade? This changes everything! Honestly, it does make a little difference, and it does absolutely affect what the best weapons are. Just look at acidic glavinous weapons, for example. But it's just so boring. The, the number is so tiny, it's not even exciting to see as a whole. So it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna go grab this because I'll simply be weaker if I don't, but oh boy, does this feel like a chore. <laughs> So I guess my thoughts on it on the whole are that the idea behind it, in fact, all of the ideas behind it are fantastic. At its core, I think this idea is to have more weapons be viable in the end game by allowing rarity 10 and 11 entry weapons to have a chance to catch up to rarity 12 weapon stats and adding more visual variety to the game just as a side benefit. That concept, that very base concept is glorious. Unfortunately though, there were a number of conditions and systems added around it that sort of avoid that concept completely. Like the fact that the custom upgrades are tied to whether a weapon is made of bone or metal rather than the weapon's rarity, and the fact that the visual upgrades of the weapons are just sort of sad, but those are so easily changed in the future, people, as in in future games. This system as a whole, I think, has a absolute ton of potential. Imagine a future Monster Hunter game where literally every single entry weapon is viable, like to the point of being less than 5% damage output different from each other, with certain ones being stronger in sharpness or affinity, and of course the different elements and statuses, but imagine if all of these were just so close in general strength that you could viably see four greatsword users with four different greatswords, and all of them doing fantastic and different types of damage. What a twist! That, I think, is the true potential of this system in the long run, and visually speaking, there are totally more interesting ways to do it, too. Even if you don't go full on unique shapes and models, which is of course the biggest preference for this type of thing, you could do something much closer to the Lunastra weapons from Base World, for example, where they had the little bits and pieces of their other monster, but the metal part of the weapon was all beautiful and well Lunastra flavored. The same thing went for Culve weapons that got gold. They're beautiful. So what if you put on a Valhazak weapon and the metal suddenly looked like it was actually constructed? Constructed from Valhazak scales, and then you could put the little flavory bits on top of that. I'm not crazy, well, I am crazy, but that would be really cool, right? All I know is my gut says maybe. And then on top of this, there is nothing to even lock this mechanic to needing to affect stats in the first place. What if, instead, we had custom upgrades as a purely visual mechanic, and you could choose whatever monster you wanted, like a consolation prize, like, ah, you wind up using a basic bone or metal weapon? That's a shame. Well, at least you can choose which monster you want to represent on top of it. Sure, I, I think there are better ways to take the system, but hey, more options are more options, and options are always good. Overall, I think I'm happy that this system exists in its current incarnation in the game. Sure, it is likely the cause of me seeing more base, bone, and metal weapons around the world, and I'm not the biggest fan of that part, but the rest of it I can get behind, and past that is what the system could become in the future that really makes me accept how it is right now. I know a bunch of you probably hope it doesn't even come back in another game in the first place, place, but I hope it does make it, and as such, I will happily point out my problems with it in the hopes that somebody is actually listening that can fix it. But I point out these problems not because I don't like the system, but because I think the system has massive potential of turning into something truly, undeniably awesome in the future. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been the Custom Upgrade Weapon Mod System. Do you like the way this mechanic works currently? How would you change it for future titles? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.